Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Like glass this morning. It's been a strange one this morning actually. There's been thick fog driving down here, it's just starting to burn off now. That is setting us up for a stunner of a day. We have had easterly in the same direction for a week, so we might have a little bit of residual swell if we push offshore. But the plan today is I'm going fish with lures. Either lures on a reef, lures on a rex. We'll just see what the conditions are like when we get there. Oh, I'll tell you what, there's some bait fish there. Look at that for bait fish. Have a look and see what they are. Oh, there they are. That'll be mackerel. Mackerel and pilchards. I don't know whether you can see those on the screen. That patch there and that patch there. That's a good sign. Yeah. Trying to put some fish in the freezer today. Let's go. Much better than that, does he? <laughs> He's a stunner of a day. Let's have a look and see what we can find. First stop is I found a bit of a tide line. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but there are jellyfish and bits of seaweed everywhere. There is tide lines sometimes, are good areas for fish to congregate in. A quick drop and a quick drop and a flick around here. We'll try drifting over the reef. God, there's jellies absolutely everywhere. Must be thousands of them. I'll do a little bit of video on my phone and show you, because they are everywhere. How many there are here? There's stacks of them. There's a little compass right in the middle of them. Three stacked on top of each other. Amazing. Drifting at 0 0.6 knots, not very fast. Let's move to a different area of the reef where I can get a little bit more drift. Well, I wonder if these jellyfish are gonna be putting the fish off. Smacked into what I imagine was a little shoal of mackerel then because it was just banging at it. <clears throat> Drift is very slow now, 0 0.3 knots. I think what I might do, I mean we are in the main push of the tide at the minute. We're about two and a half hours left of the tide. If this is how slack the tide's going to be here, we're going to need to find somewhere else. I like generally about a knot of tide. Oh, a little flubber dub pouting. Back you go, sunshine. Oh, that's a fish. Feels like a rasp, that. The drift at the minute is 0 0.5 knots. Still very slow. Male cuckoo rass. Lovely to see, but not what we are after. Yeah. Try another bit of reef. It's about finding the tide doesn't run at the same speed, at the same strength everywhere. Different areas, different choke points, depending on what the seabed's like. Um, areas that are deeper that come to real shallow will get more drift. For example, if the water is 40 meters deep and then it goes to 20 meters, you've got to get 40 meters of water through a 20 meter gap, so it runs faster. So I've got to try and find the areas in this reef where the tide is running a little bit faster. Because predatory fish, like pollock and bass, 
they like a little bit of tide running. Plus the lures work better in a bit of tide. When the water's really slack like this, when the, when the tide's really small, we um, we don't get an awful lot of drift. So it's just about finding the right the right areas with the right conditions. Watching for the birds is another sign. You can see seagulls. If you can see seagulls like skittish about on the water or gannets or things diving into the water eating little fish. That is a good sign that there's, there's fish down there because it can be it can be things like mackerel and bass and pollock that have forced the bait fish up to the surface. It's allowing the seagulls to get out of it. If this is another cuckoo ras <laughs> oh yeah. And he's off. I'm gonna say if that's another cuckoo ras, we're definitely going. Oh, that's a fish. A little pollock, our first pollock of the day. It is not a monster, but it is the target species. We're looking for these guys, but about five to ten times bigger. <laughs> yeah. The pollock that I'm looking for today wants to be anything from five to ten pound. Drift has increased to 0 0.9 knots now and you'll see it's a little bit rougher, a little bit more motion. That's because I've managed to find an area of the reef with a little bit more tide. I don't just drift around aimlessly on a reef. I'll be trying different parts of it. Edges of it, pinnacles of it, troughs of it. All until I find where the fish are or what the tide's doing best. There's a the fish. I'm thinking big ballon ras. Maybe not that big. But big enough. <laughs> yeah, definitely big enough. He's a proper chunk. You see the lure there, just in the corner of his mouth. A lovely stocky ras. Pop straight out, don't do it. There you go. Straight back down. That's the beauty of fishing light and fishing shallow like this. <laughs> well, that's what's hitting it. Micro Pollock. Could feel someone banging around on it, and it's these little guys. Micro pollock. Right, I don't know if you can see it or how well you're going to be able to see it, but that there is a boil. See that area there of disturbed water? It's like glassy on the top. That's what I was talking about. Or you can see what's underneath the water is up and down because water's come over that, created disturbance, created a boil. A little bit more drift down here, but Still not great. What I'm going to do is we we still have about three quarters of an hour of the tide. I'm going to continue fishing the tide down here inshore, and as soon as it slackens off, I'm going to run offshore and try and fish some wrecks. We have we have a little bit more of that easterly motion that I was talking about in here. It's still a beautiful day to be out with it. If I 
I'm going to pick up a bass. I'll be picking them up inshore. I'm not going to be getting any bass out on the wrecks. So I'd like to kind of give this a chance first. Another balan rass. Another balan rass. There you go. I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping that was going to be a bass, just another little pollock. This is more bassy. <laughs> Just shook the hook. Yeah, that was a little bass there. I would say that bass would have been just about bang on legal size. Legal size is around about three pound. I'm looking for something four or five pound. The way that it's shaking its head, it feels like a bass. Perfect, <laughs> absolutely perfect, perfect size as well. Oh, I'm happy at that. I was just about to give up. I was thinking to myself, I'll give it one more drift on this other side of the reef. Gently does it. Bass are covered in spines. Show you them now. All these have got a spike in it. There's a big spike there at the bottom of the anal fin. Big spike at the side of its gill. Yeah, these guys are spiky and they know how to use it. There's that lure in his mouth. Now the legal size, legal limit, is 42 centimeters. I'm going to go ahead and say that this guy's over 45. Quick measure on him. <laughs> 50 centimetres. 50 centimetres is absolutely perfect. This fella is coming home with me. <laughs> I was hanging on thinking, oh God. I've tried a few different places on this reef and I'm just a small fish, small pollock. I lost a small bass, salad boat. And that makes it worthwhile. I'll go back and try that drift one more time and I'll go off short of the wrecks. I'm happy. Must have been that one. 
Can we get it? Oh, I absolutely love it when that happens. I must have hit that fish right on the head then. out of here now. That was quite close that. Engine's cut out. Probably need to change my fuel tank. Worst possible time for it to happen but I got a stunner of a bass. I'm allowed to take two bass. I've caught two amazing bass. I'm going to take them. Yeah. Now that I can properly show you this fish, so that the boat isn't going to end up crashing onto a rock somewhere. There's the lure in front of his mouth. He is an absolute beauty. I would put this guy at being maybe 55. 57 centimeters. Perfect size for taking home. And that was the lure. Once it untangles itself. Now I do believe in the bleeding, the bleeding of fish, dispatching and bleeding of fish that you're going to take home. I'm not going to show you that, because I know that some people don't like to see it on the videos. But, if you want to Google it, the method that I use is called the Eek Jimmy, or Ike Jimmy, depending on how you pronounce it. I've got what I've come for, let's have a run offshore and see if we can't get some big pollock. Tell you what, it is an absolute scotch. Yeah, I've had a run offshore, a couple of miles off now, a couple of six miles off. And I'm going to try drifting on some wrecks with some soft plastics for Pollock. Now we haven't got much of a drift here at the minute. It'll be picking up. I'm out here just after slack water. So the drift should increase consistently now for the next three or four hours we'll try a couple of wrecks what i'm going to be fishing is i'm going to be fishing a mixture of booms and soft plastics this one isn't actually a boom it's just like a three-way swivel and i've got a long fluoro trace with various colours and sizes of soft plastics. When I get my life in order, what I'm doing is the first drift, this first drift, is always kind of like a sacrificial one because you don't quite know which way the drift is going to go. So all I've done is I've positioned myself up tide of the wreck and I'm drifting down now to see which direction the boat's going to go. Then I'll loop round and either fish with a soft plastic or while the tide's real slack now actually I might put a slow jig down. I am in 82 metres of water. Ooh, I... <sighs> yeah, I like it. Let's go. I'll chop up my suntan lotion in a minute. Blimey, that was a big one.
Oh, just missed it. Just missed it, snapping at the tail. There's a fish. Come on, where are you? Oh, a stunner of a fish. Tell you what, he's going to be too big to lift on the trace. Hey, <laughs> I tell you what, when a plan comes together, look at that. <laughs> and there's the lure in his mouth. First drop, an absolute stunner of a pollock. Hmm. Right, I, <laughs> I didn't want to talk too much while I was landing that fish because I was like, this is a good fish, this. But yeah, that is a stunner. What I'll do now is I'll loop back round. I'll tell you what, that hook wasn't coming out. There you go. Well, yeah, it's just a scary eel. Dropped in there. <laughs> I'll talk you through the theory more now. I was just concentrating on getting that fish up because I was like, that's a good fish, that. <laughs> you can usually tell when I'm <laughs> when it's a good fish because I've got my concentration head on. But yeah, talk you through the rig real quick. All it is, I decided not to go down with a slow jig because there is still half a knot of drift. Just a three-way swivel there, and I have this is going to be round about 10 feet of 20 pound floor row. Five. One, 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 where are you? There you go. 10 feet of 20 pound floor row ending in a pearl scary zeal. And all I did was, I will show you in fact, I will show you exactly what I did. But yeah, when I dropped down to the bottom then, the first time up, Summit chased it, dropped straight back down, next time up, Smash. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, go around and do that again, eh? There we are. I've steamed up and round the wreck to drift back down over it. And what I'm going to do is make sure that my trace is fully stretched out in the water and then drop to the bottom. Now that trace, that like 10 foot trace, means that when the lead drops down, the lure will follow it. Keep your finger on the spool, not only to stop yourself from overrunning from creating a bird's nest, but a fish might take that on the way down. As Soon as you get to the bottom, bail arm up and start winding. That lure is still falling to the seabed. If you don't wind quick enough, that lure will get down into the wreck and get stuck. And all you do, you don't strike, you just keep winding and the fish hook themselves. See loads of people get a bite and go, Ugh! it's just instinct, you know, just keep winding. Still snapping at the tail of it. But two fish snap at that then. All you feel is you just feel like a doof, doof. And all you do is you just keep on winding at a steady pace. No, they're just, I think this is small fish. Just had two more snap at that then. I think it's smaller pollock. They're just snapping at the tail of the lure. If we have it happen again on this drop, I'll try a smaller lure next time round.
There's a fish. It's not as big as the last one, but it's still a fish. This fish has hardly fought at all, all the way up. You know, it's what I was saying about smaller fish snapping at the tail of the lure. There you go. Small one. Ooh, you little sod. Oh. It's just coughed up all of his innards. This is something worth noting too. Just coughed up all of his innards, there look. Stop it. And it's little tiny scad. Scad that are that long. So that tells me that a smaller lure might work better today. And unfortunately that thrash, that last thrash there has bust the nose out of my lure. Might get one more use out of him. But yeah. Makes me think that there's a few smaller fish down there and that they're they're honed into feeding on smaller lure, a smaller bait fish. I'll try one more drift with this lure because I caught a big one first time round. If we have the same thing happen again, I'm definitely going to switch to a smaller one. And all I'll do is I'll just switch to something like this. So instead of come on, get out. Instead of that size, I'll go with that size. Unless I'm fishing for the table, unless I'm fishing to take these fish home, I don't generally like this type of fishing. Just because any time you catch a pollock or something from the seabed here, generally, 99 times out of 100, its swim bladder's blown by the time it reaches the surface. So it's, it's gone. So if you catch an undesirable species, or you catch one that's too small, like that last one, I would have preferred to let that last one go. But unfortunately, coming up from that type of depth, it's already, the damage was, it was too great. Yep, yeah, unfortunately, one of those like that, it just didn't fish right. Now, I might be able to fix that with some super glue when I get home. But, his day's fishing is done. Yeah. Swap him out for that other smaller one. Let's see what we've got. Whew. Sweating up the inside of my glasses now. <laughs> it is a roaster of a day. Whew. Yeah, like I say, I, you just vary the speed at which you retrieve. I like I say, I go to 20 wines. But depending on the real ratio, some people you might want to go to 15, or you might go to 30, or you just experiment to where the fish are. If all the fish are hooking up after five wines, there's no reason to go to 20 wines. Not yet. This is this does feel like a nice fish, and because I've got a really little lure on now, you just need to take your time. Now, if he's just hooked in the corner of his lip, you really are up against it. You do hope that they've swallowed the lure all the way down so it's stuck inside of their mouth. Because they do fight hard, and every lunge that they take, if that lure is only just in their lip, every lunge opens up the hole. A bit of colour. does look like a nice fish yeah that is another nice pollock that Ah, oh, 
when a plan comes together. Look at that. How perfect is that? That hook hold on that pollock could not be any better. That is a stunning table sized fish, table -sized fish as well. <laughs> this is a Skerry's eel and I think it's in 4 inch and it's a Wagasaki colour. Sidewinder Skerry's. Deadly. Lure out, lead down. This is a Penn Regiment solid carbon and this is the 12 to 20. Now it is perfect for this. You're not going to be getting something that you're going to have to bully out of a wreck. I mean, yeah, pollocks will dive back down to it, but touch wood, I've never had a pollock that, that's taken me straight into the wreck. They'll dive back down, but they, they won't always bolt for cover. And this is a little fathom. You just want a soft enough rod that when a pollock dives, the rod absorbs the lunges. Ooh. There's the fish. Oh, he's popped it off. That was snapping at the tail of that. I imagine that was a small one. Just snapping, 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 and I think just got caught a little bit in his lip. There's one. I haven't done any digging or diving this one. It might be a pouting. A little pouting. Now that's not a problem because it's not a problem because my plan today is the carcasses from the pollock that we've caught. Oh, it's chewed up my lure. Oop. The carcasses from the pollock that we've caught today, I'm going to fillet them. I'm going to use the carcasses in my crab pots, in my lobster pots. That pouch in there will go in the lobster pots. It is absolutely vital that that trace is all stretched out. If it's all around itself, by the time it reaches the bottom, it'll all be in a tight ball. And then the, <laughs> the best case scenario you can have there is that you won't catch anything. The worst case being that because it's all in a tight ball, if you do hook up a fish, that tight ball comes to a knot and it snaps. There's a fish. Oh, it's off. Oh, no. <laughs> that was a nice fish, that. What we have here is <laughs> we do have a poor beagle shark. That actually wasn't a big fish, that was a poor beagle shark. Taken off at exactly at the end of the trace. Yeah, Porgy's bit me off, look. Times a year we do get quite a lot of small poor beagle sharks. I say like 50, 60 pound. And they are known, <laughs> they are known for taking fish. This one's obviously taking the lure instead. But yeah, so there's that. I'm going to go back and I'm going to give it a go with a slow jig. Now I'm going to start with as small a one as possible. Now if I can't get down I'm going to have to go up to like 160, 180 grams. I'll try it with 100 first. And all I'm doing there is I'm just fishing it on a conflict jigging with a fathom low profile. Hopefully if we do, wah, this will pull pollock. I'll add some stunning pollock on this set up. But if we do come upon that, that toothy critter, we might have him on a little bit longer if we're using a jig. You can try. I think that poor beagle shark has switched him right off. Not even catching pouting on the seabed. And a slow jig's usually guaranteed for that.
that shark whatever it is has switched this wreck right off i was getting bites multiple bites if not fish every single drift and now i've had four drifts over every single part of the wreck nothing so <laughs> i think that's a time to go absolutely cannot complain about what we have caught though i mean i've got two i've got two absolutely stunning pollock there And a lovely pair of bass as well. So yeah, we're going to be eating well for, well, that'll probably do us. If each fillet will get two, there's probably two weeks worth of fish there. That is fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to steam back in in good time because if there's every chance I can get in and get these filleted, I can go out and do my pots as well today. Let's go. There they are all filleted down. There's your pollock, real good meaty fillets off them. There's your pollock and there's your bass. You see I've v-boned them so there is no bones left on these. We'll have those for tea and those will go for the freezer. Here we are, vacuum packed, freezes absolutely perfect. I hope you enjoyed joining us, I hope you found it interesting, all the very best. See you later.